Right now, I would like to introduce to you Ms. Erin Levesque, and she's with the Inshore Fisheries Program of the Department of Natural Resources. She's going to tell you their research that they do with the red drum and other inshore species, and I'm sure she'll tell us what inshore um, species means, and um, she'll show us some of the types of nets that they use, and we'll actually see her co-workers out in the boat, and they're pulling up behind us right now, and they're going to be actually setting up a net and showing us the fish that they catch in the net. Now here's Erin. Hi everybody, thanks for all those students that are watching in the classroom and thank you very much to my helper students here with us today. Um, as you can see, our trammel net boat is the boat that just passed behind us in the Charleston Harbor here and they set a net that's 600 feet long, it's a special net called a trammel net. It's also the net that I have right here demonstrated and it's called a trammel net because it actually has three panels of mesh and this makes it very easy for the fish to get caught in our net and it's actually very gentle for the fish. The fish are pocketed in the net and it makes it easy for us to get the fish out and to tag them and to release them. So right now what our trammel net boat is doing is they're, they have very long poles, about 10 foot long poles that they're slapping the water with and this helps to scare the fish into the net so we can catch them. So they're gonna drive back and forth a couple of times to try to get the fish to go into the net. Um, as they do that, the driver of the boat is, is pounding on the boat, kind of like a drum, to also scare the fish into the net. And these nets that we set, they're 600 feet long, which is the length of two football fields. So they're, they're pretty long nets. And on each end, we have an anchor. So it helps keep the net close to the shore. And um, you can see right here, we have a float, float line at the top of the net, so that keeps the net floating perpendicularly in the, the water column. And at the bottom of the net, if one of you students can grab that line on the bottom of the net, the bottom, that's called our lead line, and that's full of lead weight, so it, it helps keep that, that net anchored to the, to the bottom of, um, of the estuary. So here comes the boat. You can see this boat. It's pretty funny looking for a couple of reasons. We have our, our engine mounted in the front of the boat, and the front of the boat is called the bow, and that's for a couple of reasons. One reason, you can see where uh, our biologists Chris and Jonathan are standing in the, the back of the boat, the stern of the boat. That's where we keep our net. It makes it really easy for us to, to set our net that way. And the other reason we have the engine in the front of the boat is because it lets us run in very, very shallow water. And the, the way that we set our nets, we start at high tide, right now we're about at high tide, and we make sets all the way through to low tide. And the reason we do that is because we catch different species at different times of the tide. So right now we're hoping to maybe catch some, some spotted sea trout or some flounder, which are bottom fish. Sometimes later on in the tide we catch very special fish in South Carolina called a red drum. This is a, a red drum right here. This is a stuffed animal of a red drum. And this is very important fish because uh, lots of fishermen like to catch it. Um, and we actually put tags in these red drums so that when fishermen catch the fish, they can call us and, and let us know where they've caught the fish and how long the fish was. And we're able to then tell how much the fish grew and if it traveled anywhere in the state. So if somebody actually wants to take this fish, Grace, can you take that fish for me? And if you can pass this fish through the net, we can demonstrate how we catch the fish. So if you want to just, thanks, Louie. Put it right through. There you go. And you can see, if I pick this up, how that fish gets nicely pocketed right in our net. And then we just have to gently untangle the fish. Now once we untangle the fish, we put the fish into a, a live well, which is like an aquarium. We put some oxygen in there so that they can breathe and then they, they feel good and they're healthy so that we can release them after we're done. You can see our boat. They're coming right behind us now. They're picking up the net. You can see we have some, some algae in the net. I see a fish that's coming up here. You can see a fish. See the fish tangled up in the net? And, and we're going to get a closer look at those fish. You can see that there's one person that's got a big pole. That's Bill. And he's, he's helping to keep the boat straight. That's a mullet. I see that long fish is a striped mullet. Jonathan's getting that out of the net. And you can see how easily he's going to be able to pull this fish out of the net. And he's going to put it right in the live well. 
and that fish is going to be able to swim away when we're done. They just finished pulling the net in. They just pulled the second anchor in, and they're going to come right over here to us so that we can see them measuring all the fish that they just caught. And they, they take all kind of um, data for, for each fish. Aaron just mentioned the measuring part. Um, but what else do, do you do with the fish? Um, you, do you weigh them? Do you measure them? you tag them or what? We do. We, we measure each fish. We weigh them. Uh, certain fish we put tags in, like the red drum. There are some other fish that we tag as well, a fish called the sheep's head, another fish called the black drum. Okay, Bill is measuring a fish called a spotted sea trout. This is one of those fish in that family called the drums that we've been talking about. So it's kind of like the cousin to the red drum. And spotted sea trout are cool because the males, the boys, actually make drumming sounds with special muscles near their swim bladder. And that's how they attract females when they want to spawn. So see, Bill, put that fish right back in the water. It's going to swim away. Um, why are you putting the... Um are the reason why he's is the reason why he putting the fish back in the water because they're too big. Uh, no, we put the fish back in the water because we want them to swim away and to reproduce and make more fish. Um, our job is to monitor the fish population so we know how healthy they are. And it looks like he's got a cooler full of fish. Um, some some days I guess Aaron, you catch a bunch of fish. Then other other days you don't catch many. It's just really. What, what is it mostly dependent on? That's right, Louis. Well, it's dependent on season. Um, in the summertime, and, and right now still, when the water temperature is, is very warm, we catch a lot of fish and we catch a lot of different species of fish. In the wintertime, when the, when the water is very cold, there are only certain fish that stay in the estuary. Um, some of the fish go to deeper water where the water is a little bit warmer, so we don't see as many in the wintertime. Okay. Okay, when we measure the fish, we take a few different measurements, and one of the measurements that we take is called the total length, and that's the longest length of the fish, so the very, very tip of the tail, that's called the total length. And then we take another length, I'm gonna put this fish back in the water for a minute, called the standard length. And that's right, do you see that where that tail is bending? Right there? Yeah. That's called the standard length, and we call that the standard length. That's right where the fish's vertebrae ends, where the vertebral column ends. So that's why it makes that bend right there. And the reason why we take that length in addition to the total length is because sometimes we get fish and they don't have tails or their tails have been bitten off by another fish. So that standard length is uh, sometimes a better length to, to use for our, our data. There we go. Let's see some other parts of the fish right here. This is the gill cover. Yeah. Very good. It's called the operculum. And under there are where there are very delicate gill filaments, and that's what the fish uses to uptake oxygen from the water. So, like gill, fish use um, gills to breathe. What do we use to breathe? Lungs. Lungs. Right, and that's, that's why Erin keeps, um, she takes them out of the water for a few seconds, and then she has to put them back in the water because they need to be in the water to breathe. Let's see, I can take this fish out again, I can show you. Okay, so. Part on his nose. Yet they have very, very beautiful colors. So you can see this is the caudal fin. It's like a rainbow fish. <laughs> it is, it does. It has rainbow colors. This is the caudal fin, and this fin, this tail fin, is what helps the fish move forward. <laughs> I think it wants to go back in the water. For, we'll put that one back in the water for a minute. Okay. Okay, Aaron, I think we just got a cue that we have a red drum. That's the fish that we were mainly talking about um, this morning. So let's see, Mr. Bill. Pull up the red drum. So Bill is going to measure the red drum. Then he's going to put a tag in the red drum. And that tag has a special number on it. So if we catch that red drum again, or if a fisherman catches that red drum again, we know exactly which one it is. So we can tell how much it grew. We can tell how far it traveled. Now that red drum is one year old. It was born last year at this time. We have put thousands and thousands of <laughs> tags out, lots and lots of tags. Um, sometimes we catch a hundred fish in one net, and so we will tag all of those fish and release them. All of them. All of them. We tag. Um, we tag fish as long as they're big enough. They have to be a certain size for us to tag, and we want to make sure that the fish is healthy. So if it looks a little bit slow, then we'll let it go and we won't put a tag in it.